Uh, good. What is this? I would. Well, yeah, it's evening now. Uh, come on in, everybody. Um, I want to share something with you very briefly. I've been meaning to do this, and I haven't had the opportunity to. So I'm going to do it now. Let me give me some more light. I want to share something with you. Uh, so go ahead. Um, I am preparing for an evening of prayer uh, with my church. Those of you that are in Chicago, uh, we're going to uh, be spending our last corporate prayer session of the year tonight uh, at 7.30 at All Nations Worship Assembly. And I want to personally invite you to join me. We will be praying uh, tonight concerning your 2017. Your 2017. Um, every December, we sabbatical from our, our weekly corporate prayer gatherings. And, and so this is going to be the last uh, corporate prayer gathering of 2016. So I want all of uh, my people from All Nations Worship Assembly to meet me uh, in church tonight, and we're going to be spending time in prayer. So please come uh, and join me tonight. Also, uh, if you are interested in the FIRE Conference, I want you to go to allnationswa.com uh, uh, forward slash FIRE uh, to learn about my training and development conference. Uh, it's a very controversial meeting, and I want to uh, continue to fulfill our mandate to be reproducers that reproduce, reproduce. And so we do that through the venue of our fire conference every January. We're getting ready uh, for that. Um, finally, my brother, I'm getting ready for a brand new series called Bow, the Theology of Worship. The Lord has spoken to me and given me clear insight on how we are supposed to close the year. And uh, specifically, that I was to encourage the people of God that the next move of God coming to America and coming to the earth is coming through the lifted hand and the bowed knee. And so we're going to be learning about worship, about idolatry, about the song, about the sound, about the surrender, about the soul. So it's going to be amazing. Join us there. All right. I want to share something with you. Thank you for those of you uh, that have shared this. Uh, be, I want to get this to you before I go to prayer tonight. And I want to share something with you. I generally uh, don't like to go on and do a great deal of talk about the prophetic. I feel like there's a lot of people who do that these days and there's a lot of people who have a lot to say about prophets and prophecy both prophetic and non-prophetic or anti-prophetic people uh, and so I don't want to necessarily oversaturate uh, the airwaves with repetitive teachings and dogma concerning the prophetic uh, but I have been burdened about something that I just felt would be a, a, an, an encouragement to you um, tonight regarding the recent death of prophet Kim Clement um, the charismatic circle the prophetic circle, Prophet Kiva, I love you, sweetheart. Uh, the prophetic circle, uh, to be specifically, suffered a tremendous loss uh, in the in the in the recent uh, death of Prophet Kim Clement. And I know many of you are not really familiar uh, with the prophetic uh, and uh, with the prophetic community. You're not really astute in uh, uh, who they have been. But over the last several decades, uh, Kim Clement was a tremendous prophet of God uh, that gave prophecy uh, the right to be joined to music, joined to melody. And really, he had a prophetic ministry that shook nations. I mean, a very uncommon voice. And uh, he endured uh, the persecution, the speculation, the antagonism, uh, the 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 darts from the evangelical community and those that uh, didn't understand the gifts of the Spirit, the voice of God, he really endured. And, and last uh, January um, at the Fire Conference 2016, the Lord, one of the last things uh, that I prophesied in the word of the Lord to the year uh, was that we would lose an Elijah in the prophetic community. And I believe that that was uh, Prophet Kim Clement. The, my office staff and I were in the office um, a couple of weeks ago monitoring and going through uh, the word of the Lord for 2016. And um, we were trying to figure out who it would be. One of my office assistant was joking and saying, wow, uh, most of this word is already manifested and come to pass. And we're just waiting to see who this Elijah would be. And, um, you know, and, and about three days later, uh, the news came out that he was gone. Um, and so I 
salute, first of all, uh, the family, the staff, the supporters, everyone that was blessed by the extremely controversial ministry of Prophet Kim Clement. I loved him. My favorite prophetic voice of all times uh, was John Paul Jackson, another statesman prophet, a modern Daniel uh, who served America faithfully with the interpretation of dreams, with the administration of visions, strange events and happenings from God uh, that conveyed wisdom. He moved in divine guidance. It was my favorite prophet uh, before he passed, I believe last year or year before last. And um, uh, he was my favorite, not necessarily uh, just because of the strength of his gifting, uh, but because he was probably one of the most meek people that I had ever seen move integrally in the prophetic. You never saw him manipulating people uh, with offerings. You never saw him using his gifting to rape people, to exploit people. Uh, and not only that, uh, but uh, John Paul Jackson was a very, very unique prophetic gift. We don't have very many prophets uh, that can preach and teach uh, uh, as well as they prophesy. It is, it is unfortunate, but very common that a lot of prophetically gifted people uh, that vary in strengths of their abilities don't really know doctrine and they are not really astute students of the scripture. Uh, so many of them are what I call shut up and prophesy prophets where they'll just mumble and fumble through the Bible and mumble and fumble uh, through verses until it's time for them to get a word of knowledge or to begin to minister the word of the Lord. And so a lot of people really, uh, particularly in the mainstream, don't value prophets because many of them can't preach. And some of the ones that can preach that use the title prophets are not prophets at, at all. They're evangelists with a gift of the word of knowledge. So nothing they do is prophetic. Their career is entirely evangelistic uh, uh, until they begin to move in personal prophecy. That's neither here nor there. But I wanted to acknowledge that and I wanted to say that um, we have lost in the prophetic community several very strong prophets and many of the ones that we have not lost that have a voice and have a platform to the nation have undergone a heinous attack. I mean vicious brutal attacks on their finances finances, on their children, uh, on their churches, uh, those that uh, pastor. Um, and, and so in America right now, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, we are in a prophetic deficit with regard to the full mature manifestation of the prophet's office. And because many of us don't know how to recognize it, we only can sense it once we have been impacted by it. But the undiscerning uh, responds the same way to the prophetic gift as they respond to the office of the prophet. And and uh, because there is still much confusion going on about that in America, we harshly and quickly deem and esteem everybody who demonstrates any prophetic ability as such. Uh, but it needs to be said that America um, is at a really bad disadvantage when it comes to hearing. And I'm talking about on a national level. I'm not talking about a personal prophecy as that ministered uh, in conferences or events or revivals or Sundays. I'm talking about the council of heaven for the nation. We are really, really, really at a disadvantage because very few uh, prophetic vessels go grow to the point where God trusts them with the information uh, that literally can turn nations and her rulers, her princes, uh, and there is an undeniable relationship between prophecy and the purposes of God. In fact, the only way the purposes of God were made manifest in the Bible we all teach uh, was by the prophets and by personal prophecy. Every agenda, every plan, every uh, ideal, every event, every happening, every edict as it manifested. Hi, my beloved John, John, I love you. In God's world was announced, was pronounced, was pushed, was articulated, was interpreted by prophecy. And, uh, and so I have taken note to these deaths, to these assaults, because I see what Satan is trying to do uh, with robbing us of respectable prophetic ministry, of credible, high-level prophetic ministry. Um, I don't think that the devil has any problems with us prophesying a few cars here and there, giving a few rhythms or a few rhymes, you know, this is your season, you're breaking out, you're getting ready to emerge, blah, blah, blah. What I feel hell is afraid of is ultimately prophets and prophetess that move in divine guidance and move in divine guidance and move in national and even international discernment uh, where they literally have that, that power uh, 
uh, to reveal what kings are doing, even in their bed chambers. It's very rare and it's more rare than many of us would like to admit. And so um, it needs to be acknowledged that there is a vacancy uh, in the spirit for those types of weightier clout holding prophets of God uh, that will grow not just in their abilities and not just in their specificity, but in their character to the extent uh, where the heathen starts to give way and starts to buckle in their knees uh, on the arrival and the appearing of these types of prophets of God into segments of culture and segments of society that truly have the word of the Lord in their mouths uh, to the extent that they make nations tremble. We we saw that with Kim Clement. We saw that with John Paul Jackson. We saw that with a lot of other people. But here is what I feel like the Lord is saying, and I'm going to prepare myself for prayer tonight with my church. Um, I feel that this is the day of the double portion. Now, I, and I feel that this is not just the day of the double portion blessing and the double portion release and the double portion favor. If we are remaining integral to the scriptures, the only announcement of the double portion of anybody's spirit being transferred was from one prophet to another. Now, I know we have stretched that phrase so far. And we have diluted it so far until it can be applicable to anything. Double portion birthday, double portion this, double portion that. But if we are remaining integral to the scriptures, that was a statement from one prophet ascending and arriving to official status of prophetic service for Israel. Because there was a vacancy and a new measure and a new portion was released. So I know you and I and your favorite preachers love to hear about double portion everything. But in the Bible, and that's the only point of reference I have for my prophesying, that term double portion was talking about a double portion portion of access uh, for for official manifestation of power in the prophet's office because it's in that spiritual office that God has given certain psychological, emotional, intellectual upgrades to make sure that a prophet or a prophetess can manifest their services well for the people, the place, the moment they have been called to. Every prophet or prophetess of God will go through certain life drills, academic drills, ecclesiastical drills that prepare them and equip them and vet them for the platforms they will give voice to. And then they go through physiological upgrades to allow their body, their history, their lives to be able to stand under the power, the density of the word of the Lord that will flow through them. That was what Elijah meant when he talked about when if he did not uh, speak the word of the Lord, that the word of the Lord in his bones was like fire. What was going on? He was talking about the physical, the mental, the soulish pressure that it took to restrain his revelatory ability uh, and not release it. He had to literally fight his formation to try to stop it from coming out. And the end result was fire. That's what he meant when he said it was fire in his bones. But y'all think that's about everything but the prophetic too. Listen to me, beloved. We are in a season and we are about to see in America the double portion prophets. And if you think that this last season and this last era of prophets was weird and was uncanny and was scary and was unpredictable, you have not seen anything yet. I believe that the deaths of John Paul Jackson of 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 of, uh, of Kim Clement and others like them served as a seed for the double portion. Remember when Elijah left, when the chariots of fire came burning through the heavens uh, to come and get one era of prophetic voice. Then there was the arrival. First of all, the waters were split open, and they called upon the God of Elijah. And the Bible says that Elisha now stood as prophet in the stead of Elijah which means in the same place of influence, of access, of reach, of depth, of span, of power, of ability. And so I believe what the Lord has spoken to me is that we will see the double portion prophet in America and they will begin to move and very profound spiritual powers. They will have access to information that there will be no such thing as private. If you think that God is going to allow hackers, I mean, 
demonized people who crack codes and mysteries and decode information on on internets to be able to retrieve sensitive and fragile information from victims and you think that they are far more advanced and you think that they are far more capable than the God of heaven who holds all the information of every individual and every living creature on the earth, you are sadly mistaken. We will see the double portion prophet. And I'm going to be very candid with you for a minute and I want you to hear this. This is exactly why you have seen the, the gradual, the specific, the slick, the sly degradation of prophets from the mouths of pastoral men. Now, I uh, pastor a local church, right? And um, But it is not the dominant anointing on my life. It's not what most people know me for, but that is my post in this season and phase in my life. So this is not an assault against all pastoral figures, but it's going to be a rebuke to many. You know, many of you have fallen into the subtle belief and the erroneous doctrine that pastors are more significant than prophets, that teachers are more necessary than prophets, that if we need to make a mature believer, all we need to do is get a good pastor in their lives, a good teacher to speak into their lives and ground them in truth. You have been trained to believe that all you really need for your development is the local church. And when you're plugged in there, you'll get everything you need, although the harsh reality reality is is most most of them jokers are so fragile and frail that they are inept and incapable of building a whole believer because most of them are built on a nanu nanu government where the pastor and the deacons are the governmental stewards of the church and and they don't even have the spiritual power that it takes to manage the future nor the forces that fight them they are officers and ministries of stability they don't have the ability to decode to interpret to announce or to go to war with the gods that are often still active in the lives of God's people that come for their future and for their past. That has always been the prophet's anointing. So many of your pastors, and here and here's the key, you only find this degradation from people and pastors that are afraid of the supernatural. They don't flow in it. They don't know how to preach it. They don't know how to explain it. If it manifests in their church, if they can't get a, a hold of it really quick, they get fearful. They get weirded out by it. So they go on Periscope, they go on YouTube, they go and contract a diviner, pay them a little necromancy fee to come in and, and to do consultations to talk about whatever they're going through in their local churches to counteract any other alternate prophetic word that has come for their system and come for their stream and come from their structure. But here is the problem. What we have not been able to achieve supernaturally, we have done in our own flesh and that's why people don't want to see double portion prophets because they don't minister from the reserves of their flesh. When preachers and ministers go into abuse, it's because the anointing stopped working. When that when the anointing lifts off of them, they only have the power of their flesh, the power of their mind, their emotions, their, their intimidations to use from. And when you use those things to minister to people, you become abusive, you become narcissistic, you become a Saul. The problem is many of our leaders, because they restrict the supernatural. They are afraid of it. They don't want to give access to it in their little services. So what they do is they end up reaching for their burnout and preaching out of the absence of fuel and from the place of their exhaustion. And they give them all tired, rerun, microwave sermons to people and expect them to get the victory over this same fallen regime of ambitious angels that has been contending for the destiny of the human race since Adam. You're not going to be able to equip and to dress the human race for real spiritual warfare or for you're going to make it messages because the matter the truth is most of them are not and most of you are not. So we need God's prophets and I believe we need to repent from ejecting them out of our churches, from making them feel like they cannot be trusted with managerial responsibility, from making them feel like they are so inconsistent and they have no real place in the local churches. You need, we need to repent for behaving as if by keeping prophecy and prophets away from the people of God. When the book of Hosea chapter 12 says, by the ministry of the prophets, 
I preserved Israel after I spoke through many visions and many multitudes. And in the Greek, Mr. and Mr. Pastor, in the Greek or the Hebrew, that word ministry, when Hosea 12 talks about the ministry of the prophets, it means the hand. If you don't have relationship, respect for the prophet's ministry, you have never even seen the hand of God. All you have seen is some provisional miracles, but you don't know alignment. You don't know adjustment. You don't even know anointing. The way that was done in the Bible was through prophets. <laughs> you people have emphasis on schools and you didn't know that we birthed that too. The first school on the planet was created by the prophets. The first song on the planet was sang by the prophets. The first time a nation was delivered in Israel was by the prophets. So for you bishops and pastors to be trying and overseers and archbishops and bishops deluxes and what else they got out there uh, you, you know whoever else you got you know y'all got so many crazy arrangements going on nowadays all of y'all trying to kick the prophets out of the thing that they gave birth to and out the thing that they helped erect with the apostles after you other guys came along far later after the new testament and many of you even after the rise of the roman catholic church so you can't expect a move of God when it's being mangled by managers and mangled by administrators and the voice of the Lord has been put on restraint because you've got intimidated leaders that are afraid of revelation and they would much rather use research to build their churches and to build their movements. But that's not how revival comes, brethren. It's born by revelation. And Amos, Amos 6 says, in the, the, the days come, saith the Lord, where there will be a drought, not of dew or of, uh, 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 of rain, but of bread or of rain, but of hearing the word of the Lord. Not of the word of the Lord, because God is talking all the time. But there is going to be a drought of hearing the word of the Lord. And, unfor and unfortunately, most of you pastors in, in America, whether you got a storefront church or a mega church, most of you are responsible for helping and the forces of hell aid this crisis in America because you don't want people to hear the word of the Lord. You know, you have taught people that preaching is more important than prophecy. You have taught people that singing is more important than prophecy. You have had the unmitigated gall to teach people that prayer is more important than prophecy and prophecy predated all of that. People were prophesying on the planet before they were praying. People were prophesying on the planet before anybody was called to preach. Try me. I know my Bible. People were prophesying on the planet before they were gathering in buildings and gathering in synagogues and gathering. And people were prophesying before they gave offerings. So if we're going to be technical, if we're going to be theological, you need to be able to have substantial scriptural support for why you continue to allow Satan to evict watchmen, to evict watchers, seers prophesiers, dreamers of dreams from your midst and you want to replace them with praise. But praise cannot achieve, cannot accomplish, cannot establish, cannot arrange, cannot produce, cannot assign what can be assigned by the official ministry of the prophets. And many of you preachers need to repent for it. If you don't know what you're talking about, if you are not an expert in the subject matter, don't act like you've got supreme access to revelation just because you are afraid of it and you are intimidated by it. The double portion prophets are on the earth and the sign that they are here and the sign that they are being dressed and the sign that they are being affirmed and a sign that they are being nurtured and the sign that they are being built for this next era in America is the death of Elijah. Pay attention. There is a revelatory succession active in the spirit right now. And for those of you that won't allow it to happen with your will, it's going to happen against your will. You, If you think Kim Clement was something, if you think John Paul Jackson was something, if you think the prophets of the last great healing revival, Paul Cain and William Branham, if you think Kenneth Hagin was something, prepare yourself. You will see the manifestation of the double portion prophets. And I know most of you have to keep them away from your circles because when they come, and they come for the deliverance of your people, they have got to begin with dealing with you and your mistresses and your diseases and your disasters and your pedophilia and your molestation and your theft and your carnality and your gossip and your slander and your backbiting and your blacklisting and your mafia-like undercover cult-like behavior, your social media rants and, and, and flirtatious banter with, uh, with, with un 
unwilling uh, of virgins that respond to men like you because you've got money and you've got opportunity and you've got reach to give them a better life. You are no better than Bishop Don Juan. There are Pentecostal pimps all around America that are looking forward to, y'all are worse than the Muslims. At least they teach that you get your 70 versions when you get to heaven. You Negroes run on Facebook and run on Instagram and you want to get them on earth pre and post your convocations and your revivals. So you are afraid of the double portion prophets because they have no filter, they have no guard, they have no real loyalty to any one circle or circle. Their obligation is to be the mouthpiece of heaven. Their obligation and their loyalty is to be that, that, that voice that that cries in the wilderness and does not spare and unfortunately beloved i am one of them so the double portion prophets are on their way and if all of these pastors and all of these denominations kick y'all out come to chicago i'll take care of all of you i know that that's the whole you know thing is that everybody wants to be a prophet and i know many of you are not but some of you probably are and we've got space for you we've got apostles in my church we've got pastors in my church we've got prophets in my church we've got teachers in my church we've got evangelists in my church so there are more than just pastors deacons and sunday school teachers in my church you know why because it's a real church so let's make way in America. I digress. Let's make way in America for the double portion prophets. And let's make way in business for the double portion prophets. Let's make way in government for the double portion prophets. Let's make way in cities around America for the double portion prophets. They're not just going to minister in the same way of those that have gone before them. They are going to be much different, much more stern, much more specific, much more skilled, much more sensitive. They're going to have access to the complete manifestation of Jesus Christ, the prophet. And it's going to rescue lives, turn nations turn history and shape the events of cities as we know it. Prepare for the double portion. I prophesy that the death of these men is the sign that we're not just going to see prophets, but they're going to be those that move in the double portion. So this periscope is an affirmation and it's an affirmation for those of you uh, that have been struggling to find your grounding, to find your footing, to find your identity, to find your security in a pastor only model that does not want you to live, does not want you to exist, does not want you to breathe. Matter of fact, they want you to be pastors. They want to make you pretend like you are a pastor or you are an evangelist. But let this be an affirmation unto you. And don't keep letting these, these circles muzzle you and bury you under false teaching, false doctrine, uh, intimidation, speculation to make you feel like you are out of your mind. The prophets of God have a place in the local church if it's a local church. And the prophets of God have a place in the world. And for the events that are coming, and I'm going to pull out of this before I say too much, in 2017 you're going to need access to a prophetic voice. A prophetic ministry. Not one that's passing STDs around, that's homongering around on Facebook and Instagram and waiting on, you know, little girls to come up after them or the old girls to come up after them. They're not looking for sugar mamas. They're not walking around afraid to get married, raping and robbing you. I'm not talking about those dudes. We have seen them. We've had enough of them. I'm talking about a new species of men and women of God that cry holy, that cry repent and that know what is the mind of God for the nation. We're about to see the manifestation of the double portion prophet. I'm on my way to prayer. The Lord bless you. Just want to get that off my chest. Honor to all. And, and, and listen, let me say this to those of you that are musical prophets. There is something that's going to happen in America. Even as Kim Clement was a musical prophet, I believe that many of the prophets of God are about to return to their post and praise and worship. The, the, the fact that prophets got kicked off of praise and worship to begin with and got replaced with musical artists is why it's perverse now. 
because you allowed the subject of praise and worship <clears throat> to be handled and to be mangled and to be molested by men and women who are only motivated by money and only motivated by being a part of the industry who don't know God. Some of your greatest singers have no clue today. I'm talking about today in the gospel music industry can sing and riff and run and wouldn't know the presence of God if it knocked them dead in the face. They come and visit you in your service. They don't lift their hands. They don't bow. They just wait for them to get their little two songs out, get in their little limo, run back to their old hellish lives. They don't know the presence of God. But I'm telling you, there is a species of prophet that's about to return to their post and praise and worship. Kim Clement was one of those who would get upon his 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 instrument and the word of the Lord would drop. The power of God would drop. He would know the mind of God. He would move the heart of God as he played upon his lyre like David did, who was also a prophet. So I'm telling you, it is not until worship and prophecy meet that the testimony of Jesus can be seen because the book of Revelation chapter 19 says worship God for the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. When worship and prophecy marry, then you see the full manifestation of Jesus the prophet because he loves to sing to and over his people unto deliverance, unto destiny, and unto direction. So prepare yourself. I believe we're about to see the double portion prophets and they're coming to mainstream. That's why everybody's so nervous. Y'all was okay when we was in the storefronts and we was in the under the tent revivals and we was with bull horns crying out, you know, in the streets, repent. Y'all didn't get nervous until we hit mainstream TV and you didn't get nervous until we started getting access to thousands. Y'all were okay when we were on the little sidebars whispering the prophecies, you know, here and there. But y'all got nervous when the prophets started breaking into the mainstream. You wanted us to keep prophesying in our little ponds, you know, where the charismatic movement was cute. When we started breaking into mainline denominations and breaking into doors that a lot of pastors are struggling to break into, then you got nervous. Oh my God, the prophets are coming. Oh crap, let's hurry up and get this together and defame them and degrade them and make sure people don't get drawn to them and don't run up after them because we don't know what kind of dirt they got access to. But ready or not, here we come. The prophets of God are breaking into the mainstream and there is not a thing you can do about it. And if you refuse to let them on your little things and your little areas and your little realms of society, God's going to open the heathen for them. And you will see them on CNN and Fox News and BET. Don't nobody care about you shooting out the mass text messages not to let the prophets have access to your little internet blog talk or your little radio show or your little, you know, annual revival thing. God will send them to the heathen if you don't know how to receive them. So go ahead and try it. But I'm telling you now that prophets are God are coming and there's nothing you can do about it. And they're going to prophesy. What a thought. All right. So I'm preparing myself for prayer. I've got a lot to pray into, a lot to pray about, but I just want to encourage you and release this out there. I know this is going to make a lot of folk mad, but I could give a nickel's worth of dog meat. Uh, God bless you. You know, if this encourages you, praise God. If it irritates you, take some communion. I suppose you'll be fine. But the prophets of God are on the way and there is nothing you can do about it. Grace and peace to you. And I'll see you guys at prayer. Talk soon. Bye.